Grand rising beautiful humans and welcome to Rising Minds where our intention is clear and it's to share information for transformation. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time to tune in, either watching this on video, on YouTube, or listening to this on audio. Thank you for being here. I wanted to go straight into it as always, and I wanted to share with you guys this one practice um, that has changed my life. And I mean that with every word in terms of how it created a more harmonious life um, and also helped me with, 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 with progressing in my personal life and, and in my career. And that is brain and heart coherence. So if this is the first time you're hearing brain and heart coherence, it is a, a, a practice that is induced by our breath and our thoughts and what, what we are focusing on. So brain and heart coherence is a, is a, is a scientific uh, practice, or should I say scientifically backed with research from HeartMath Institute in California. They are one of the leading institutes in the world that studies the heart, studies the, the deep understanding of the heart, and more importantly, how it impacts our life and how it impacts our energy. And um, what they found about the heart, which is very, very interesting, is they found out that the heart has its own mind, it has its own memory, it has um, neural pathways, so it, has, it can store memory, but it also has its own mind, its intelligence. There is a, think of it as a, as a, as a brain. And it's very interesting because what, we, what they also found out from research is that if the, it, the, 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 the brain, generally speaking, is, in, is the general, right? So it sends information to all parts of the body. And it usually sends information to all parts of the body, meaning all the organs, um, more than anything, more than any other organ, except for one, and that is the heart. So the heart has the capability to send signals to the brain, and it does actually more than the brain sending signals to the heart, which I found very, very interesting. And it also allows us to, to look into it in a deeper way of understanding that we are we, we have two forms of intelligence in our body, one which is the, the brain, the mind, and also the intelligence of the heart. That's why they say the heart will guide you, you know, in ancient scripture, your heart is, uh, you know, follow your heart is the path, or it, it, just generally speaking, the heart is mentioned a lot, and there is a, you know, a path of, of a heart. So, so the heart communicates to us, this is very important, that, 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 they, that they found out today. It also senses, um, it's like a sensor to, to, our, to, our, to, our, to our surroundings, and it, can, it has the ability to feel something before we actually see it. And there was also another test, um, and, um, and the test was basically a computer with different images, and each image was popping up on the screen. And sometimes it's a it's a it's a lovely image, it's a lovely a, a beautiful image to look at, and sometimes it's a painful image or an image that is that brings a negative emotion. <clears throat> and what they found, again, very very interesting, is as they were paging through, they could monitor and see the reaction of the heart, the heart rate, as well as you know, the, 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 the mind of what, how we are reacting to those pictures, because we react differently. It's information, it's data that we're looking at, and it goes in, in our mind, and it's, and, but now what, they, what we found is actually the heart actually tunes in prior to the image popping up, and it has a, 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 an almost look like an, a, an invisible antenna of knowing what's coming up into our space. And the heart reacts faster and before the mind, meaning before the brain, it actually reacts faster and reads information faster before that, before that was popping up on the screen. And I, again, guys, look this up, um, search HeartMath Institute, search the case studies around the, um, the, the heart reading into the images prior to it appearing on the screen. That's all available online if you do the research. And it's, 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 it's fascinating, it really is. But the reason I wanted to share with you guys the, the practice of brain and, heart, brain and heart coherence is because <clears throat> if you're someone that doesn't do any form of breath, then I would highly, highly encourage you to start here. This would be the first starting point of 
of understanding that you can change your energy and also understanding that you can also change your brain waves um, and, and be more calm and clear and focused and more in coherence. Now, as I was talking about the heart, we understand that the heart is electrical and has its own electromagnetic field. And we also know that the brain has um, in, uh, its own electromagnetic field as well. And what we are looking to achieve in this practice is synchronizing the electromagnetic field of the heart with the brain and getting into a beautiful coherence order where the brain waves of the uh, starts to slow down and also they, be, they become more in orderly so that the brain starts to speak the left with the right. There's more order in, in the brain. Now this order is coming from the heart. But the question is, how do we induce that? How do we get into that state? How do I get my brain and heart synchronized as one? And that requires one, the breath, which I'm gonna happily demonstrate to you guys or break this down for you guys who are watching this or who are listening. And it goes by the, 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 the part one of this is, is, is breathing in through the nose for a count of five, slower and deeper than usual. So if I'm doing this on camera, for those of you guys watching this, it would look like something like this. Hold for a second and then breathe out for five. But what you do is you breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. And you do this for a sequence of at least 30 times and while you're doing this breath, you're, you're, you're slowing your, 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 your brain waves down, but also you're changing your nervous system from sympathetic, fight or flight, to parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. So that's part one. So that's slowing things down. The second part, which is the most interesting part, is we focus our attention on our heart. So you can actually put your hand on your heart, or you can just focus your attention all your attention on your chest that heart center the heart space right and when i say focus your attention i mean like literally focusing like you're in that spot in that spot of awareness it's like if i say to you focus on your thumb or focus on your toe or focus on your chest you're focusing all your attention and energy in that space and then you continue the breathing so that's part two so part one is the breath five in five out all in the same order not are all about it's exactly the same rhythm so you build this rhythm then you focus your attention on your heart and as you're breathing out your heart as you're breathing out through the mouth you're almost envisioning that this breath is coming through the heart it's like activating it's like you have a little window in your heart and you breathe that out okay now if you do that in a good sequence then the third part and the most important one is you bring to mind that's part three you bring to mind something or someone in your life that elevates your emotion that makes you feel good inside that you love that you're grateful for that you appreciate it could be anything or anyone but there's always one thing in your life that you can appreciate that, that you can uh, uh, or, or or feel grateful for right it could be your health it could be your wealth it could be your family it could be your relationships it could be your skill, whatever it is in your life that you're grateful for, and you can now focus your attention on that thing or that person, all of a sudden, as you breathe, you start to feel something different in your heart. There's an, what we call an elevated emotion is happening. So the frequency of the heart, the electromagnetic field of the heart is starting to expand. It's starting to create waves around you. Imagine that you're like in the center of the circle and the circle is expanding, this field of energy is expanding from your heart. And as that expands, it influences the frequency of the brain. It influences the electromagnetic field with the brain and it starts to sync. And what sinks in the brain links in the brain and there's that synchronization that's happening and that's where we get into a very coherent state. And this is super, super important as an entry practice in your life. So if you're not practicing any form of breath and you want to get more grounded, get more clear, get more calm, you wanna have a good couple of hours of, of being in a good state, uh, almost, almost like a flow state, then you practice the brain and heart coherence. 
Um, and I get a lot of questions sometimes of like, okay, so when do I practice that brain and heart coherence? Where's the best time? And to be honest with you, it's any time, as long as you're practicing it. But I like personally to do it either later in the evening before bedtime, because it helps me calm my nervous system and I get into a very coherent state and I wake up coherent as well, which is great. But also you can practice it in the morning. And you can practice it whenever you feel that you're out of balance, when you feel stressed, when you feel something's not right. You do the breath and it will, it will bring, you in, bring you back into balance. It will calm your nervous system. And this is super important for those of you that are listening that suffer or experience any form of anxiety. This is a great practice. This is something that will honestly support you. Now, why do I say this one thing has changed my life? It's because it made me become more of a calmer person. It made me become more coherent in my thoughts. It made me become more in uh, as the observer, not in the program where I'm getting reacting to the world. I'm reacting to people and things and other things. No, I'm incoherent. Therefore, I'm seeing things for what they are. And I'm understanding that there are projections. I'm understanding that there are other people with, with tempers and other people that have different emotional charge and different projections. I'm understanding that the world is going through a change, a shift. Um, and it's important for us to be more observers of ourselves and our surroundings rather in it, in the program. So coherence allows us to step out for a bit. And it allows us to restart our, 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 our computer of our mind. Yeah. The, 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 so, so, so if we can be, make this a part of our practice in our life and, and we do this on, a, on an ongoing basis, this becomes a, a skill where it becomes faster for you to activate the heart, faster for you to open your heart by simply focusing your attention on your heart and breathing. You can change your energy on demand. The more you practice this, and this is, I've been doing this for years, guys. I've been doing this for years. So understanding that the more you develop your skill set, the more things will start to show in your life as to the benefits of this. And there are many, many benefits, one of which, as I mentioned, nervous re regulating your your emotional state which is super important but then there becomes other little uh, uh beautiful bonuses that start to appear in your life right so if one of which is the uh, ability to be more in into with intuitive meaning i know if i'm stuck in my brain or stuck in my mind versus i'm in my heart i know when i'm not in my heart versus when i'm in my when i am in my heart so am i leading with heart am i taking actions with good intentions with my heart? Am I being guided by my heart or am I being guided by something else? And, it, and, and, and one of the superpowers we all have is the ability to be guided by our heart and to have that internal intuition that is ever present, that is ever connected to a greater mind, you know? So the heart also acts as a, as a, a, a magnet. Um, and I'll be getting into that more and more down the line. And I actually, this topic is a beautiful topic and a beautiful study, you know, brain-heart coherence. I, I really um, spent a lot of time both practicing and learning about this. And in one of the recent conferences in, a, in, in, in Los Angeles, uh, we actually shared this, the, 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 you know, the case studies and the background. And, the, and we had, a, we had an, a real time experience I, I guided everyone in the in the conference and it was a, a amazing some people having breakthroughs because you know for the if for some people it's for the first time they realize they can connect with their heart you know and the more we understand the power that ho that we hold within us and the the uh, different um aspects of ourselves that we can unlock from doing certain practices one of which is brain and heart coherence so so it has definitely changed my life from the aspect of the intuitive side the aspect of bringing in more clarity grounding focus and not reacting to my world but rather responding to my world and this is what we want we want to be able to be res res to be able to respond and be the observers rather that we are reacting to everything in our environment and today with everything that's going on in the world with the news and the potential of wars and economy crashing and all the news that we hear, all of that is in a way coming at, at us and throwing us out of balance, right? If we are overthinking about things, if, so it brings in more fear, more worry, 
more frustration, more helplessness and hopelessness to everything that's going on. So how do we get our power back? How do we take back our power? And one of which is getting back to the heart, getting back to brain and heart coherence and, and really fundamentally understanding that it's not just a science, which it is, it's so much more than that. <clears throat> but we bring it and we approach it from a scientific approach to l realizing the health benefits it has both for our brain and our physiology. But as you practice that, you start to realize that there's so much more that comes with it. And there's so much more that you can learn about yourself as you connect more to your heart. And I'm going to leave you with this uh, crazy story, um, which again is available uh, uh, um, as part of the case studies that heart and science share. And it was about a, uh, it was about a, a, a person that donated their heart. So they donated their heart after they died, and um, that was part of you know, their will or whatever you want to call it after dying. But the way they died was with being stabbed or murdered. It was a murder case. And after this woman, I believe was a woman, she was murdered, she obviously donated her heart. And then the person that took the heart, as it was you know, a very successful transplant, and what happened is the person started you know after he would they recovered etc started having those nightmares those dreams and constantly you know having this same dream of the last moment of that person's life where they were stabbed or attacked by the killer um, and what happened is it was always ongoing and it was obviously that because remember now we understand that the the, the, the heart has its own memory so it it takes information it stores that in the heart so the fear potentially or whatever that was that got stored that data that moment in time it got stored in the heart the 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 person that had the new heart was able to go to the police station and draw up and draw out the person of what they looked like because it was very vivid for them and then they followed the through the case and they actually arrested the person and that person admitted to the crime isn't that fascinating guys isn't that crazy that our heart has a photographic memory. Just let that sink in for a moment. Our heart has a photographic memory of experiences that is that we 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 have with that, that that is gets stored there. So it's important to question ourselves. Like, okay, so how do I know what's in my heart? Well, practice brain and heart coherence. See what comes up. Practice brain and heart to coherence. You'll be you'll be guided by this beautiful divine intelligence, which is a heart. The heart is an intelligent, divine. I like to call it divine gift because it gives us life. Without the heart, there's there's nothing. Yeah. So understanding this beautiful, um, <clears throat> you know, organ and this gift that we call heart has so many benefits in our life, and that's why I say, when this entered my life, I started practicing it. And I was getting a lot of messages. I was getting a lot of clarity. I was getting a lot of aha moments. I was, you know, getting emotion, some emotional sometimes, because it's it's there is a lot of information to be to be shared from the heart to us, right? So here's my reminder to all of you, beautiful people and beautiful listeners and beautiful watchers that are watching this YouTube video as well uh, on Rising Minds YouTube channel. Thank you for for really being here and thank you for listening and thank you for being open to receive the information that you know uh, has really impacted my life and again i always start with that pure intention of i really want to share information that has impacted my life and i want to share information of others uh, of their own experiences and their wisdom that they can share that will make a positive impact for you the watcher the listener and that is super super important because what are we here to do if we're not here to raise each other what are, raise each other's energy and and give everyone the best potential and to 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 succeed because you know i always say this uh, even to my to my business partner and, and 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 my close friends i say you know we live in an age of abundance <laughs> we really live in an age of abundance and if we are too blind to see then what happens is we hold on to information and we are we come into a lack mindset we think there's i don't want to i don't there's something good that i found out but i don't want to share it 
I don't want to share it with others. There, there is a mind, there's a consciousness of that in this world, right? It's the lack mindset. It's the, set, the mindset that is not out to share what, what's worked for them, knowing that, you know, if people are going to benefit from it, then it's going to change their life and they'll be happier and healthier. And then maybe they will share it with others. And then maybe this world become a better place because we need, you know, we definitely need more happier, more loving people on this planet. And uh, we need more people that are, have, are leading by the heart, with the heart, you know, because if we're not, then we go to what, what I call the reptilian mind, the mind of lack sometimes, the mind of it's not enough, I, the mind of comparing, the mind of it's, there's not enough for, for everyone. And that doesn't, that doesn't serve them and it doesn't serve the world. So when we understand that we live in an age of abundance, we understand that we're able to share information that can be very beneficial out there. And then those who are in tune, those who are awake, those who are getting, getting it will go, oh, okay, this is, I'm going to practice this and I want to see for myself. Oh, wow, it, it does work. Now we, we develop trust because I'm, when I'm sharing with you something that is going to work for you, there's, a, there's the trust in its essence. I'm making time to share something with you. And now we've developed this relationship. Now we are developing a relationship of trust, a relationship that we can share with others that is going to help. And then that, then that will influence someone to say, well, you know what, that worked for me. Let me share my story. Let me share a, a practice. Let me share my experience. Let me share my knowledge. And that helps. That starts to, you know, create this uh, replica effect of, of everyone having and changing their mindset around you know, what is not enough and what is enough. Of course, there are certain certain practices or going deeper into the work that requires a lot of energy and it requires a lot of time, then yes, you have the right to ask for an energy exchange for it, right? But everything in moderation, everything in doses, everything you do with intention, and as you do it with intention and attention, only things are going to gonna manifest in that space of awareness. And um, I can tell you one thing from personal experience that one of the things that helped me manifest a lot of my dreams in life, a lot of my experiences, a lot of the things that I wanted to achieve has been by practicing and opening the heart and, and elevating my heart emotion because think of it as the magnet. Think of it as the magnet because when we are in gratitude, we are in receivership. And you need to be so grateful in your heart that when you think about something and you focus all your attention on it, you feel an energy in your heart. You feel like someone's, you know, there's something going on there in the chest area in the heart. And as long as you, if you don't feel it, that's fine. Then you need to practice. Because I can tell you that as you activate your heart, as you open your heart in a real pure state of gratitude and with intention and attention, it's a magnet and a magnet to only beautiful things of what you are grateful for to come back into your life, to come more of what you are grateful for. So tuning into that through your heart and starting to practice brain and heart coherence is the one best thing that has changed my life. And I'm sharing this with you guys today. There's many things that's changed my life. This is one of it. And I'm literally sharing this with you because I know from first-hand experience and of experience of hundreds and hundreds of clients that I've worked with, almost probably over a thousand, over the time, over the years, that has changed their trajectory simply by being guided by the heart. So here's my reminder to all of you. Follow your heart. And if you are not sure what it is, then make a relationship and make time to connect with your beautiful, loving, divine gift your heart much love and positive energy